Good day, everybody. My name is Oscar and welcome back to more Subnautica Below Zero. Now, today you join me blasting through the glacial basin on my Snow Fox, which is one of the coolest things in Subnautica ever, in my view. Uh, again, I haven't played this since my last video, I just haven't got time, but I love making these little update videos for you occasionally, so I'm really glad I'm able to do that for the moment. Before the video gets off to a start, I'd really appreciate if you could give a like if you do go on to enjoy it, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. So, first off today, we're going to have a look at the Spy Penguin. Now, if you don't know what the Spy Penguin is, somehow, it is a creature... Uh, creature? It's a robot that um, you can control that's supposed to be used for exploration, reaching places that the human wouldn't be able to reach because we're too big. Uh, and it's an awesome concept and it was actually created by, I think it was a group of four or five Subnautica community members. Um, so. I did do a video on it a while back if you want to go and watch that. But basically it's an awesome thing and it's finally been implemented. So what it is, is you can now just type spawn spy penguin and you can also make them in the fabricator I think. Um, and here it is. They all have different names, penguin, and if you spawn another one it might be called pengal or pen... V, Peng V, V is one of the people that came up with the Spy Penguin, she's in my Discord server, you should join it in the description and pinned at the top of the comments, that's the plug over. I think it requires a Spy Penguin remote, yeah, for you to be able to control it. So, if I right click on this, I can control, I don't know which one I'm in, Penguin I'm in, um, the controls are odd. I think I read on the wiki that the maximum distance is 50 meters, um, and at the moment, oh, we can switch penguins as well. At the moment, uh, creatures will not react to them uh, when you're like taking pictures and stuff like that. But the plan is, according to a Favreau card, that creatures will react to the spy penguins when you're taking pictures and stuff, which should be quite interesting to see. There are now poses that you can take to get some really sick shots. So you can actually change to this view, which is like a selfie camera for your little penguin, um, and you can sort of have a look around. And there's Robin there, you can see her in all her glory, uh, with and it gives like a weird filter sort of thing on it. Um, I don't know what this is, it's a little bit weird, I haven't played around with this yet. There's another filter. Um, so it seems every time you look away from her, she changes stance. Oh, whoopsie daisy, didn't mean to do that. Um, a nice little crouch. Or squat, I don't know how you pronounce it. That's a thumbs up, I think. Well, there's loads of poses. Oh, and there it is. She hits the dab. That is worth a save if I've ever seen one. Look at that. Yes! This is the sort of content that I bought this game for. Awesome feature. You can send postcards to your family of you dabbing. But the main reason for these guys being included in the game is that they can access places where the player would not be able to normally reach. And the developers have created various zones that you can go to and test out the ability of the spy penguin. So, they've made I think six or seven areas, so we're going to try them out now, see how good they are. Um, this one, it, we're just going to do spy penguin. Let's control this little dude, see where it takes us. So I think the range was 50 meters, so this should be easy enough. So this is just a little obstacle course obstacle course going over a thin pipe thing. Um, and then once you get to the end, you can interact with these little elements, with the little arm thing, and pick it up. And it has, as you can see in the bottom right, it has a little container showing how much it can store. There's copper there as well. Um, you've got to get the angle right. And more titanium. And then there's diamond, which is cool. And then you can head on back. Once you get out, you should be able to open the storage of the penguin. And there's the things we collected. It's really that easy. And obviously, without the spy penguin, we would never be able to get to those materials. So that's pretty cool. This one's a little bit bigger. Uh, but we still can't fit through it because, for some reason, Robin is physically incapable of crouching. If, he, if she could even slightly bend her legs, we'd be able to fit through there, but apparently that is beyond her capabilities as a spacefaring human. Uh, so that's a thing. That's Pengo, Peng DinoFuzz. DinoFuzz is also in my Discord, if you want to go and chat to him about his ingenious creation. So this one, I think, isn't just a small hole to go through. This is actually a, a ledge that you wouldn't be able to get on as Robin, and gives you a nice view of everything. But I'm assuming it also takes you to a... Yeah, there you go. Some good outcrops where you can get some valuable materials if you're running low. 
So that's basically it for the spy penguin, I think. Um, it's a really cool feature. Very, very much looking forward to seeing how it's implemented effectively into the game, but I can see that it's going to be super useful for collecting that sort of resource. So, last video I covered the Vent Garden, which is my 100% fav most favourite creature in Below Zero, potentially my favourite creature in all of Subnautica ever. But I failed to realise that there is actually two Vent Gardens in this game. There's this one, and there's also one a little bit further around the corner. So, they fixed the lighting bug, at least one of the lighting bugs. This now shines like a neutron star. Um, I don't do physics, that was probably a bad comparison. Uh, but you now can't clip through this, which is good. And it actually makes a thumping sound when you bump into it, which is cool. And it's also animated at the bottom, so that when you get close to it, or even just, I think it does it on automated basis occasionally, you can now swim up into the centre, which is exactly how it would get its food. And what you might not be able to tell is that actually when you wait below it and then it opens up, there is actually a sucking current, like a tractor beam. See, I've got my keys off the keyboard and we're drifting upwards. Awesome feature. Really, really cool. Um, but that is also not the only one. There is actually another one just around the corner. I've not seen those plants before, but they are really cool. And here's the other one. This is another vent garden, same variety, doesn't look any different, I don't think, from the outside. Oh, I've just realised the top is actually animated, I didn't notice that, because it's so painful to look at. So the top is animated as well, I think they need to fix the lighting on that a little bit, but that does expel some of the, I, I guess, waste. Um, this one's interesting though, because it actually has a vent beneath it, uh, which makes sense, so that's how it sort of gates. Gates? That's sort of how it gets its nutrients and stuff from that thermal vent, which is an awesome, awesome, awesome thing. Now, another thing that's coming up with the vent garden is that there are going to be two variants of vent gardens. There's going to be these big ones that don't move. They have their animations. You can go inside them and stuff. But they never move. They always stay above these certain vent gardens, uh, above these certain spires. And then there are going to be other vent gardens, which are slightly smaller, and I'll show you a screenshot now from one of the developers, which shows the sort of size they would be. These ones are going to be free-moving. I'm not sure entirely how they're going to work, if they're going to be able to lock onto spires, or if they're just going to infinitely float around the big boys. I don't know how that's going to work, but it should be awesome to have the little ones floating around. I say little, they're still humongous, uh, but still not quite as big as these massive ones here. Another bit of news which is probably completely relevant to any of you, you probably don't find this even remotely interesting, but there's a new plant called the Tornado Plant, or Tornado something, which I just thought is a really cool looking flora, uh, and I don't think we give the flora enough credit sometimes. Um, so there it is, awesome looking plant, um, lovely design, very vent garden-esque. So these guys now are officially terrifying, I think the thing that makes them so scary is these little tendrils on their legs, they really freak me out. Uh, I don't know where this goes, I'm sort of intrigued to see where... Oh, okay, it's a little cave. It goes underneath the vent garden. Anything interesting down here? Bearing in mind, I haven't played some Nautica properly yet, um, since most of the major updates, so there could be absolutely anything down here. I have no clue what this is. Seems like a big, endless cave. But the vent garden's a pretty significant landmark, so you'd expect the cave underneath it to go somewhere. It does actually look like it's leading somewhere quite big. And there's... is that a sea truck? There's a sea truck there. I haven't built a sea truck in the game. I've never been down here, so I don't... Why is there a sea truck down here? Oh, it's very nice. It's sort of getting purpley. Is that a spinefish? It's a, yeah, it is. Wow, it's getting really purple. I think I need the HUD so I can actually see where we're going. Wow, this place goes really deep. Wow. Oh! Oh, okay. It's a Chalicerate. I did not know these guys were here. I knew they were spawning naturally, but I didn't know that this was where they spawned. Uh, is this the crystal... Yeah, it is the crystal cave. That's why it's purple down here. These guys are absolutely terrifying, and their eyes... Whew, their eyes pierce the darkness because they're really bright white, which is awesome to see. But I'm very confused as to why there's a sea truck down here. That beats me. Um, but that just sort of seems to have a broken back. Something's hanging off. I don't know if that's meant to be like that. I don't remember seeing a Chalicera with that before. Okay. Um, but yeah, I don't know why there's a sea truck down here, but apparently that is just a thing. So those guys are going to be annoying. 
But yeah, either way, that is pretty much it. I don't have anything else to talk about today. I'm really sorry that I haven't been keeping up to date, but I am going to try to. My exams finish on the 17th of June, so after that you should be able to expect frequent updates and other things as well as just below zero, which is what I'm going to try and do, but I mean, I've said that before and it hasn't happened, so we'll just see. Holy crap on a cracker, this is massive. What the heck is this? Wow, this is like C Emperor Prison sort of size. Interesting. I wonder if anyone can tell me what this is or what it will be or anything like that. But yeah, I haven't got anything else to talk about today, so that is pretty much it. But I'm going to leave it here. Please, if you did enjoy the video, give it a like. It means a lot to me. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. Join the Discord link in the description and pinned at the top of the comments. And until the next one, I'll see you guys in the next one. Try, my friends. Thank <laughs> you.